Today is April 19th. I'm Serena, and welcome to the Seven Streams Bible Reading Method. I am so excited because it's just another beautiful day to be in the Word today, and I'm so glad you're on this journey with me. We are in the prophetic stream, which means we are in the book of Isaiah. Now, we are getting pretty close to the end of this book, but we do have four chapters to cover today, actually five, chapters 60 through 64. We are reading from the Good News Translation this week. Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, Jerusalem, and shine like the sun. The glory of the Lord is shining on you. Other nations will be covered by darkness, but on you the light of the Lord will shine. The brightness of His presence will be with you. Nations will be drawn to your light, and kings to the dawning of your new day. Look around you and see what is happening. Your people are gathering to come home. Your sons will come from far away. Your daughters will be carried like children. You will see this and be filled with joy. You will tremble with excitement. The wealth of the nations will be brought to you. From across the sea, their riches will come. Great caravans of camels will come from Midian and Ephah. They will come from Sheba, bringing gold and incense. People will tell the good news of what the Lord has done. All the sheep of Kedar and Nebaioth will be brought to you as sacrifices and offered on the altar to please the Lord. The Lord will make his temple more glorious than ever. What are these ships that skim along like clouds, like doves returning home? They are ships coming from distant lands, bringing God's people home. They bring with them silver and gold to honor the name of the Lord, the holy God of Israel, who has made all nations honor his people. The Lord says to Jerusalem, Foreigners, will rebuild your walls, and their kings will serve you. In my anger I punished you, but now I will show you my favor and mercy. Day and night your gates will be open, so that the kings of the nations may bring you their wealth. But nations that do not serve you will be completely destroyed. The wood of the pine, the juniper, and the cypress, the finest wood from the forests of Lebanon, will be brought to rebuild you, Jerusalem, to make my temple beautiful, to make my city glorious. The descendants of those who oppressed you will come and bow low to show their respect. All who once despised you will worship at your feet. They will call you the city of the Lord, Zion, the city of Israel's holy God. You will no longer be forsaken and hated, a city deserted and desolate. I will make you great and beautiful, a place of joy forever and ever. Nations and kings will care for you, as a mother nurses her child. You will know that I, the Lord, have saved you, that the mighty God of Israel sets you free. I will bring you gold instead of bronze, silver and bronze instead of iron and wood, and iron instead of stone. Your rulers will no longer oppress you. I will make them rule your justice and peace. The sounds of violence will be heard no more. Destruction will not shatter your country again. I will protect and defend you like a wall. You will praise me because I have saved you. No longer will the sun be your light by day or the moon be your light by night. I, the Lord, will be your eternal light. The light of my glory will shine on you. Your days of grief will come to an end. I, the Lord, will be your eternal light, more lasting than the sun and moon. Your people will all do what is right and will possess the land forever. I planted them, I made them, to reveal my greatness to all. Even your smallest and humblest family will become as great as a powerful nation. When the time comes, I will make this happen quickly. I am 
the Lord. The Sovereign Lord has filled me with His Spirit. He has chosen me and sent me to bring good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to announce release to captives and freedom to those in prison. He has sent me to proclaim that the time has come when the Lord will save His people and defeat their enemies. He has sent me to comfort all who mourn, to give to those who mourn in Zion joy and gladness instead of grief, a song of praise instead of sorrow. They will be like trees that the Lord himself has planted. They will all do what is right, and God will be praised for what he has done. They will rebuild cities that have long been in ruins. My people, foreigners, will serve you. They will take care of your flocks and your farmland and tend your vineyards. And you will be known as the priests of the Lord, the servants of our God. You will enjoy the wealth of the nations and be proud that it is yours. Your shame and disgrace are ended. You will live in your own land and your wealth will be doubled. Your joy will last forever. The Lord says, I love justice and I hate oppression and crime. I will faithfully reward my people and make an eternal covenant with them. They will be famous among the nations. Everyone who sees them will know that they are a people whom I have blessed. Jerusalem rejoices because of what the Lord has done. She is like a bride dressed for her wedding. God has clothed her with salvation and victory. As surely as seeds sprout and grow, the Sovereign Lord will save His people and all the nations will praise him. I will speak out to encourage Jerusalem. I will not be silent until she is saved, and her victory shines like a torch in the night. Jerusalem, the nations will see you victorious. All the kings will see your glory. You will be called by a new name, a name given by the Lord himself. You will be like a beautiful crown for the Lord. No longer will you be called forsaken, or your land be called the deserted wife. Your new name will be God is pleased with her. Your land will be called happily married, because the Lord is pleased with you, and will be like a husband to your land, like a young man taking a virgin as his bride. He who formed you will marry you, As a groom is delighted with his bride, so your God will delight in you. On your walls, Jerusalem, I have placed sentries. They must never be silent, day or night. They must remind the Lord of his promises and never let him forget them. They must give him no rest until he restores Jerusalem and makes it a city the whole world praises. The Lord has made a solemn promise, and by his power he will carry it out. Your grain will no longer be food for your enemies, and foreigners will no longer drink your wine. But you that planted and harvested the grain will eat the bread and praise the Lord. You that tended and gathered the grapes will drink the wine in the courts of my temple. People of Jerusalem, go out of the city and build a road for your returning people. Prepare a highway, clear it of stones. Put up a signal so that the nations can know that the Lord is announcing to all the earth, tell the people of Jerusalem that the Lord is coming to save you, bringing with him the people he has rescued. You will be called God's holy people, the people the Lord has saved. Jerusalem will be called the city that God loves, the city that God did not forsake. Who is this coming from the city of Bozrah in Edom? Who is this so splendidly dressed in red, marching along in power and strength? It is the Lord, powerful to save, coming to announce his victory. Why is his clothing so red? like that of someone who tramples grapes to make wine. The Lord answers, 
I have trampled the nations like grapes, and no one came to help me. I trampled them in my anger, and their blood has stained all my clothing. I decided that the time to save my people had come. It was time to punish their enemies. I was amazed when I looked, and I saw that there was no one to help me. But my anger made me strong, and I won the victory myself. In my anger, I trampled whole nations and shattered them. I poured out their lifeblood on the ground. I will tell of the Lord's unfailing love. I praise Him for all He has done for us. He has richly blessed the people of Israel because of His mercy and constant love. The Lord said, They are my people. They will not deceive me. And so He saved them from all their suffering. It was not an angel, but the Lord Himself who saved them. In His love and compassion, He rescued them. He had always taken care of them in the past, but they rebelled against him and made his Holy Spirit sad. So the Lord became their enemy and fought against them. But then they remembered the past, the days of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and they asked, Where now is the Lord who saved the leaders of his people from the sea? Where is the Lord who gave his spirit to Moses? Where is the Lord, who by his power did great things through Moses, dividing the waters of the sea and leading his people through the deep water to win everlasting fame for himself? Led by the Lord, they were as sure-footed as wild horses and never stumbled. As cattle are led in a fertile valley, so the Lord gave his people rest. He led his people and brought honor to his name. Lord, Look upon us from heaven, where you live in your holiness and glory. Where is your great concern for us? Where is your power? Where are your love and compassion? Do not ignore us. You are our Father. Our ancestors, Abraham and Jacob, do not acknowledge us. But you, Lord, are our Father, the one who has always rescued us. Why do you let us stray from your ways? Why do you make us so stubborn that we turn away from you? Come back, for the sake of the people who have always been yours. We, your holy people, were driven out by our enemies for a little while. They trampled down your sanctuary. You treat us as though you had never been our ruler, as though we had never been your people. Why don't you tear the sky open and come down? The mountains would see you and shake with fear. They would tremble like water boiling over a hot fire. Come and reveal your power to your enemies and make the nations tremble at your presence. There was a time when you came and did terrifying things that we did not expect. The mountains saw you and shook with fear. No one has ever seen or heard of a God like you, who does such deeds for those who put their hope in Him. You welcome those who find joy in doing what is right, those who remember how you want them to live. You were angry with us, but we went on sinning. In spite of your great anger, we have continued to do wrong since ancient times. All of us have been sinful. Even our best actions are filthy through and through. Because of our sins, we are like leaves that wither and are blown away by the wind. No one turns to you in prayer. No one goes to you for help. You have hidden yourself from us and have abandoned us because of our sins. But you are our Father, Lord. We are like clay, and you are like the potter, You created us, so do not be too angry with us or hold our sins against us forever. We are your people. Be merciful to us. Your sacred cities are like a desert. Jerusalem is a deserted ruin and our temple, the sacred and beautiful place where our ancestors praised you, has been destroyed by fire. All the places we loved are in ruins, 
Lord, are you unmoved by all this? Are you going to do nothing and make us suffer more than we can endure? Dear Heavenly Father, Happy is the nation who trusts in you. And happy are the people who trust in you as well. Thank you for your gracious mercy and for coming for us in the midst of our mire and misery. Thank you for coming to earth and being with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Highlights from Chapter 60 Isaiah is one of the greatest writers that ever lived, and this is certainly among Isaiah's best. It's even among the most wonder-filled chapters in the whole Bible. It talks of a grand gathering, people and wealth coming to Jerusalem, testifying the sacrifices, it's the homecoming of history, and the Lord will make his temple more glorious than ever. Verse 7, there will be a great service in Jerusalem. Eventually, the chapter morphs into talk that can only be interpreted as paradise itself. It's at this time that we have unimpeded access to God. This is really cool. (laughs) You have to say that that was one of the most joyful chapters that we've read. Moving on to chapter 61. What we read in the first three verses of 61 is Isaiah talking of Jesus. Jesus knows this verse is about him and quotes this when he is speaking in a synagogue at Nazareth, Luke 4, 18. This prophecy is fulfilled 700 years later. This is a time of great restoration. The messianic theme that actually started in Isaiah 59, 20 is still proceeding. Israel will have servants and wealth and joy. The praises to the Lord will be coming from all nations The testimony of what God has done in this one nation will amaze the whole world that much. Chapter 62 The splendor here is the imagery of a wedding. It's an enchanting wedding, too. The symbolism is matched in ways by John's writing at the end of Revelation when the new Jerusalem is coming down like a bride, preparing to meet her husband. The surprises and excitement of a reunion also come into play. There's food, bread, wine in abundance, and phenomenal worship. Perhaps you've been to the theater where you can have dinner. Well, I guess you could say it's just like this, only it's colossal. And most of all, it's the Lord coming to save. Chapter 63. There's a peculiar insertion here, a mentioning of Edom. This could be a reference to all the enemies of God, all the enemies of Jerusalem, who will be trampled and defeated permanently. It's definitely a break in the literature, interrupting all this glory, worship, celebration talk. However, it is part of celebrating to defeat an enemy and revel with our victorious Lord. Isaiah resumes abruptly, talking of the goodness and love of the Lord and his precise care and provision. The chapter ends with a prayer of mercy, beseeching God to treat them according to God's goodness versus their character and lack thereof. This is a theme we have seen before in Isaiah. Chapter 64 arrives, and we're not looking way forward. We're not looking back. Isaiah just wants God to show himself and make himself known. Things are difficult. Attitudes across the nation are crass. The city is in ruins. Beautiful places have been deserted. And Isaiah is pleading for the Lord to come to them. Wow. Isaiah certainly is able to go all over the place. We have excitement. We have joy. We have destruction of enemies. And then he's kind of ends with this realistic sort of, oh, I just wish that I just wish this mess would be cleaned up. So... It's great to see the humanity of Isaiah in the midst of all this. SevenStreamsMethod.com is the home port for this podcast. We are available on other podcasting platforms. All that info is at the website.
Also at the website, there is a place to sow a seed. Sow a seed and reap the harvest, both for yourself and for the kingdom. We invite you to do that as God leads you. The anointing that you sow in is the one that you grow in. And I trust that you are growing as you're listening to the Word of God. There are other resources available at the website. Definitely check those out. And we also have an upcoming trip, Israel, January 2020. There are spots available if you wish to join us in Israel. There is a link on the website. Come with us and see the Holy Land. Tomorrow, we portage to the exile stream back to the book of Hosea. Know that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Until tomorrow, I'm Serena, sailing with you down the seven streams.